<laughs> All right, welcome to another episode of The Daily Stand-Up. I'm Mel Delgado, developer advocate at Cisco. And I'm Denise Kwan, also a developer advocate at Cisco. So, Denise, you want to tee up the topic for today? I think to, we're actually going to be starting a journey of topics, and hopefully this is a good one for everybody to like follow along with. But the topic is automation. Um, something near and dear to our hearts because we talk, we always talk about APIs and stuff like that. And so, but there are so many topics about automation that we probably um, cannot cover in one. So, but so we're today we're going to be focusing on what is automation. What does automation actually mean to you? And then I will tell you what it means to me. Okay. Okay. So you want to start with me? Yeah. <laughs> you, you talking to me? Um, yeah. No, no. So, so what automation, the way I see it, just in super simplistic terms, is something that you would have done somehow by machine that you would have otherwise have done manually. And that could be anything, really. I mean, it, for example, like uh, I think you and I were talking about this a little uh, while earlier, which is like automating things in your home. It could be that simple. And it could be something like, you know, when you set your thermostat, that's something you would do manually. Uh, at least growing up as a kid, that's what we do is go up to the wall kind of do the thing, you know, manually set the temperature and you, you would kind of set it and forget it, hopefully. But sometimes, you know, you leave the house, uh, you go, you know, off to maybe you're going to go travel somewhere for a while and the thermostat's still doing its job and said, well, you set me to this temperature. But wouldn't it be great if you could somehow automatically, and that's the automation, somehow automatically let that temperature change and say when you leave and you're far away from the house. And then on your way back, and not until then, uh, when on your way back, it just turns it up to the uh, temperature that, that you had previously. So that's like a super simple example, I guess. But I think there's some underlying questions that come from that. And I uh, wanted to ask you about those. Yeah, I mean, my definition of automation is really allowing another thing like a computer or a device to do something that a human being would have otherwise done themselves and um you know just not something like kind of set it and forget it kind of thing you might need to push the button for the script to run or you might need to push a button to for it to get started or that part could be automated from a scheduling perspective as well but it's basically it's in my perspective anything that you can not do as a human being and let a computer or a device do for you. And um, I think that, and the reason why we're talking about this is I think that a lot of people hear the term automation and think that they need to do some coding and that they need to, um, it needs to be very specific to tech and that's not necessarily the case, right? In, in your example, you were talking about automating your thermostat um, by using these new IOT kind of thermostats because yeah, as a kid, I did have to move the little thermostat and then you would have to make sure to turn it off when you wanted to turn it off. And so, um, you know, now we've gone to the point where we do have smart thermostats and can take a look at your history and figure out when that should go. Yeah. And then, and then you think about like what you do, like in your daily work, uh, it just makes me thinking about it. like when you bring it back to work context. So that's at home. And when I think about it at work, there are, there's just, there's so many things I can, that you could probably think off the top of your head, off the top of your head where you're thinking you're doing those things manually, but wouldn't it be great if the machines were doing the work? And so then it might be like, well, Gmail, what, what would be something that would be a candidate to automate or should be automated? And so in my mind is anything that you've done, maybe, a handful of times, let's just say three to five times that you've done over and over, like repeatedly, that would be a good candidate. And that's where you, you know, you kind of just draw that line and say, okay, well, if it's, if it's three, five times, I mean, okay, it's the same thing over and over again. Like maybe I could find a way to automate that. And so, you know, I think of like network engineers, right? So you're, you're configuring a switch or you're uh, a server engineer uh, or some kind of engineer where you're dealing with deploying, I don't know, virtual machines. Uh, and, and you want to deploy these over and over again so why not design a way to uh, solve the problem of deploying those programmatically as opposed to you know, doing a whole bunch of what I call click ops. So you, you're, you're right clicking and deploying a virtual machine and let's just say there's 15 of them. So you're going to spend X amount of time doing that 
over and over again. So why not let the machines do that and, and program your way out of that situation? I, I know that a lot of times when I'm talking to people about moving towards automation, they will always say like, but it takes me longer to figure out how to automate it, how to program it. And that's in some ways a valid case, but you also, if you think about the number of times that you're going to have to do it in the future, if you add up all of that time, um, it is probably going to be more beneficial of investing. I think a lot of times automation in the beginning, especially the early days where you aren't super familiar with the coding, you're not super familiar with the APIs, it is an investment, right? So I'm not gonna say, oh, it's super easy and it's gonna be a lot faster than doing what you call click ops, doing things manually, but you have to think about over time. Now, you know, if you do it, you had said, you know, about three-ish times, if you're only gonna do it another two times, it's not gonna be worth it to automate. But if you know that you're going to be doing it a lot more in the future than it is, but also a benefit of automation is that one day you're probably going to choose, hey, I don't want to be working here anymore and I want to move on and do another job. Well, when you automate the process, you uh, are teaching the people later how to do all the clicking because, you know, nowadays, like, there's a lot of things that if somebody's manually doing it all the time, and let's just say that they either go on vacation or they leave the company, now all that knowledge is gone. So that's one benefit of automation as well. Yeah, yeah, true. And I, and I think, it, it, to your point, um, I want to expand on something that you brought up earlier, which was that sometimes, in my experience, sometimes it could take you maybe you know six, eight hours to automate something. And whether you're doing that programmatically or you're doing something like a low to no code tool or using something like that, sometimes it'll, it, it could take you a while to figure it out, but that's, you're solving a problem. And that's just how I see is that, that, that people solve problems and machines do work. Machines do repetitive work, especially. So, so, you know, it, it could be discouraging and it's almost an obstacle, but be ready for that and be ready for that that uh that aha moment when you solve that problem you're like aha now that task that it used to take me however long and i've been doing that forever and ever now it's just a it's a button press somewhere right i can click and done or i run a command line done you know like just you just run one line and hit enter and you're having a cup of coffee or something right or you're, it could be scheduled too day. it could be oh, scheduled. Yeah, scheduled and Good so point. you literally yeah. do nothing <laughs> yeah so, so that point of, um, we were talking about this before also, Denise, is you, you have low code. It's not always a programmatic thing. So you have low code, low to no code tools available. You, you, of course, you could always you know, prog- do it programmatically can, as well. Can you some expand people, on what, what low to no code means? Because some people who are new to automation may not even understand what that is. Yeah, yeah. The, um, so in uh, we have a product. Um, we actually have two. I think it's built into one of our security uh, products. And so you could do things where you can, um, put a, a certain number of like, uh, actions together and you can put conditional logic in between them and that kind of thing. And you're just clicking and dragging and then configuring the actions to do something. In fact, Cisco has an offering named Cisco Intersight Cloud Orchestrator that offers low to no code, uh, programming. So it's a platform on Intersight. You, you'll see like the, these different pieces coming together, but you're just clicking and dragging functionality. And in between that functionality or an action, if you will, you'll see conditional logic as, as an option. So you could just click and drag and then just put them together in a certain sequence and say, okay, well now that they're configured, you go off and you, you execute this series of steps. You'll see this over in, uh, again in, in different products, uh, Zapier being one of them out there in the industry. So if you're looking to like automate some of your, maybe some of your office processes, that's another good one. Um, internally, like um, you might be using, well, internally, externally, you could be using something like, uh, I think Microsoft has uh, Microsoft Power Automate. That's another mm-hmm. tool where you can uh, stitch together a series of steps. And in that series of steps, you could have something like logic built into it with like conditional logic. So if this, then that, and then you start to think like a developer, almost like think programmatically, if you will, without really writing code per se. So that, I, I think that's a few examples that come to mind. That's good because I know that 
a lot of people get scared. They're like, oh my God, I have to learn Python or I have to learn a coding language. Um, that is way beyond my scope of knowledge. And I mean, like we're saying, you don't necessarily have to go and code, right? There's a lot of tools available and even a lot of devices now have their own UI to be able to just pro like s schedule something. I mean, a lot of our, a lot of the IoT devices, such as the thermostats, such as the Wi-Fi cameras, all you're doing is selecting what you want to happen at a certain time. That is still considered automation. Once you get your head into automation, I think that you you kind of wonder why didn't I do this all along? You know, like even when you're using those low to no code tools, you get the advantage of of letting machines do the work, um, and. And you, you start getting the hang of the, the logic that goes in between. Well, I don't, you know, I'm going to take this action, but only if a certain condition is met. So you start going into like conditionals, which is a programming fundamental, if you will. Um, I want this to take place so many times, right? So then you, okay, well, how many times? Like, you know, you, you loop over things. So you, you start developing somewhat of that mindset. And then, yeah, eventually you'll start to dive in and, and you'll, you'll, maybe you, you might, dip your toe into the world of programming. So since you said get people started, um, what do you recall being your first thing that you automated? And it doesn't have to do with uh, work. Just like go back in the days when you started playing around and be like, this is what I'm going to automate. Yeah, yeah. I, there's, I don't know. There's so many. Um, well, at home, I do a lot of automation. So I do things like, you know, my switches you know i power off bulbs you know in the or light, light, light strings for example in the backyard you know dawn to dusk kind of thing uh i'll or just to a certain time uh, my thermostats are set that way as well so when i leave the house it it knows that there's nobody home if if there's nobody home there's enough sensors to know if there's somebody home so it'll 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 power everything off until i get home or at least i'm approaching getting home and then it'll it'll turn back on so, but I don't even think about it. I just come home and my house is, you know, warm, <laughs> like for example, um, uh, garage doors. So if like, I don't know how many times I've left the garage door open at night, but if it's past 1am and the garage door is open, for example, it will just automatically close it. Uh, there's, there's all these different things. Um, my sprinklers, uh, there's so many different things I've done at home. And then at work, um, I've, I, I've done automation for building out virtual machines for building out physical machines on demand, uh, as in like, okay, you have this bare metal machine, doesn't have an operating system on it. Okay. Let's, let's get an operating system installed on it, uh, you know, automatically. And only because I was doing it at such scale that I, I, I couldn't do it by myself. It didn't make sense to, for me to do the, uh, those tasks manually. So it, those, you know, th those were just a few that come to mind uh, at the very beginning, uh, sort of speak of when I, I, I caught that automation bug <laughs> and it was because of those things that, that, that those things inspired me. And suddenly I'm, I'm automating all kinds of things that Whoa. I guess sometimes it makes some of my other team members uncomfortable because it's like, well, wait, we've been just doing it this way for a couple of years. I'm like, well, let's, and these are internal processes. This isn't like our internal, like business processes, right? As opposed to, um, you know, the stuff that we do like in data centers or, you know, programmatically, it's just almost like looking inside and going like, well, gee, how come we're handing the spreadsheet from this person over to that person, for example, well, let's automate that and then send you a message. It does something, right? I don't know. Just, I, I, I toy around with those things internally as well. So. Cool. Yeah. I mean, if I go think back my early, early days of, and I don't even think that I was quite a developer at that time of like, you know, we used to, before we had all the smartphones, um, we use digital cameras to, after, after having the whole 35 millimeter thing, right? Like, oh, digital cameras. But then how do you take a look at the, the, ca the pictures, right? They were just on this tiny screen back then. And so, I don't know, I'm a very OCD person and I like to name all of my pictures. And, but rather than IMG, whatever number, I had automated the ability to like rename a whole bunch of pictures. I could just select a group of pictures and just au automate that because I was tired of like click, paste. <laughs> <laughs> and so Hope for the best. that was one of the first things that I automated <laughs> because I mean, it sounds silly now because we don't really, I think most of our pictures all stay on our phones for the most part. Um, but that was like one of the first things that I did to automate and make my life much easier rather than sitting there manually clicking yeah. and pasting and everything. But 
from a work perspective, obviously as a developer, um, automating tests, that's like one of the big ones to have, to be able to not have to manually do things. You just click a button, walk away, to go get a coffee or whatever, and then come back and know whether or not the changes that you made broke anything or didn't break anything. I mean, that's like the beauty of it. Nice. Well, I think that's that's all we have for today. It's going to be a dis or that was our discussion anyway. Was is what automation is? What is your story of automation? Are, are you interested in it? Are, are do you see any roadblocks? Maybe uh, if you do, why don't you hit us up in the comments down below? We'd love to hear from you. Uh, some final thoughts, Denise. Oh, I mean, like you said, please let us know. As I said earlier, this is going to be a kind of a journey. We're going to be talking about automation in the next few episodes. So if there's something specifically about automation that you want us to talk about, definitely let us know in the comment section. Um, I had asked Mel what was his first thing of automation. Have you started trying to automate stuff? Um, what is your first try with automation? Um, but that's all we had. Uh, and I guess catch you in the next episode. Mm -hmm.